Bethany says, with a significant portion of our workforce operating remotely, I'm exploring how SharePoint can facilitate better collaboration and communication. Well, that sounds like a postcard. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm interested in best practices for setting up SharePoint to support remote teams effectively, especially in, in terms of document sharing, communication channels, and project collaborations. Well, that's just a small question, isn't it, Bethany? It's, <laughs> it's really <laughs> small. I had just recently a project I was working on that was still living in file share with VPN in and email. And I've never seen such a siloed going right the way back. They were right Right, still, they had all older SharePoints that were 2009, 12, um, that, like going all the way back right through to 19, but they were still all on premise and they were going to the cloud. And watching these people work was so stilted and so siloed and, and information was lost and the teams weren't actually collaborating or communicating at all unless they were in death by meeting and they then couldn't get their work done. To then have it and shift to the other side. Now, when you look at that, you kind of think, oh, that's the norm. But once you've lived in the new world, it makes such a massive difference in terms of having that, you know, the SharePoint piece where they could just get to their information from any device. That alone <laughs> and having SharePoint for them to be able to collaborate and just send a link instead of attachments and losing files and not knowing which version it was and, just that alone, we saw such an increase in the way that they were collaborating, especially with remotely with information feeling lost and living in meetings. So they started to work a bit more asynchronously instead of synchronously, like in the death by meeting. Mm -hmm. That alone, I think, was just good to see. Yeah, best practices. This is the starting point, right? Um, everybody got shoved into the cloud because of the pandemic and mm -hmm. a Right now, we're retroactively having to go back and fix things. You know, it's like you get a team and you get a team. There's like 50,000 teams for 10 people because every time they created a meeting. So planning that architecture and starting with who needs to work together. You know, I always, my formula is always like, who needs to work together? What are they working on? How are they going to get that work done? And that's how mm -hmm. I structure my teams. But you don't have to have teams for SharePoint sites either. So, you know, you can have SharePoint sites for the communication piece and who needs to know what, when, and set up your communication sites. But always start with the who. You can shove technology out the door, but people aren't going to use it unless it's usable. And we do that by talking to them and asking them, what, what do you need to get done? And who do you need to work with to get that done? But I, I look at this too, and I think it's like, is it just SharePoint? Are you looking at the entire platform, Microsoft 365? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because Channels. I mean, are like, where does Teams fit? Is it just depending on the size of the organization? Are you looking at, at Engage? Uh, are you know, for that for that aspect of it? I mean, all these pieces, how they work together. I mean, this is such a again, not a small question. It it is truly an it depends uh, yeah. answer. I think those, there's no wrong answer for for like what you guys have shared there. But uh, I mean, my first thought is, you know, depending on what, what you want to do is first go in and define what are those, the outcomes, what are the goals, what are you trying to do? If this truly is just the SharePoint, the intranet component of that, it's very different than answering this question about collaboration and communication in general, which mm -hmm. could be a lot of yeah. different pieces together. So. Christian, I'll kind of add to what everyone has said so far. I think there's a lot of things we need to think about here. Sure, SharePoint might be the answer for the more formal things as far as documentation for HR, or maybe the finance likes to work in SharePoint if they've been doing that for a while. But for that collaboration that we're talking about, that's essentially what Teams was set up for, was to be that central hub for your communications, for your collaboration. So to what Christy and Sherry were saying, it is essential to make sure that you have the right structure for a team. I think a lot of that goes to, if it's not working right now, get those end users in there with you and do some user acceptance testing, find out what's not working so that you can reconfigure those teams. If you have too many teams, like Sherry was saying, if we've got team sprawl happening, it could also be there's too many channels, right? If, if they're having a hard time and they're overwhelmed at finding where they need to go to have that conversation or to find that information. We've got search, but we know that that might not be the end all for finding things quickly that they need. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's restructuring how many channels there are and, and how that collaboration needs to happen there. To your point, Christian, I think it's also making sure that you're bringing in the right apps and services into that team and, and helping them to know, hey, you can have a planner tab here. 
you know, you've got this OneNote notebook that comes with it. You can add a list. You can bring in whatever website you need. So if, if you can design it to where it is that hub that they can get everything done that they need to, you're going to foster better adoption and, and quicker ways for them to, to know, oh, I get it now. This is the way I can collaborate. And then also doing things like, hey, did you know you can get to OneDrive from Teams? You don't have to go out to that separate app. So then we get into the the app switching Hanging and the, the class con- over yeah, yeah over yeah. the whole of 365 with using teams yeah so let me get into that we're not having the context switching and the app to app switching that has to happen we can do pretty much everything that we need to do right be in that deep focused work yeah yeah i think you know a lot of times when i see it starting it's that creating of that just starting from the i need to create a sharepoint site as well hang on a second are you looking as you said christian is it you're doing your internet and you need a hub and what does the structure of the organization to look like because i've seen it go really really pear-shaped but they didn't want to create mm-hmm. it where there was too much going depth they just wanted to go wide and when they went wide it became a mess because they didn't want to do it by org structure you couldn't find a thing so there's that internet side of it to the Mm -hmm. I'm a team and I need to collaborate as a team and you know what does it look like and if you've got a large organization trying to get to org wide after 100 it falls apart you need to then go into Viva Engage so it's like what tech are you trying to you know what is the solution what are you trying to to Mm -hmm. answer here for the business because that is as you said you know best practice it's like well best practice but for what area because SharePoint is a beast you know so I've got questions for the question (laughs) because you could use it in you could use it in so many ways are you trying to set up you know a brand site are you emergency operations are you trying to you know there's so many different things that you could do with this technology so best practice though is still the same you know Structure, as you said, sharing governance. Who are the people? How are they collaborating? Why are they collaborating or needing to communicate with the hybrid workforce? Is it you just need them to have somewhere to go and get information because you just need a SharePoint site? <laughs> so, yeah, so many facets to this, so many facets. And one of the things that I would add, which is kind of ironic considering a lot of the people on this call are trainers, is that <laughs> so much has changed in the last five yes. or six years in terms Very of much. SharePoint, like all mm-hmm. of you guys have mentioned, that mm-hmm. one of the things that we recommend to all of our clients is, you know, if we're going to be doing an intranet setup or a migration or we're going to implement teams or something like that, we really push hard to have some upfront training to let them know, like, this is how it works now. It's kind of funny because, you know, even several years ago, I'd walk in and admins would meet with me and be like, okay, well, how do I do this? This is like, let's stop and let me draw on a whiteboard what it looks like now, because I don't think you understand Mm -hmm. how much it's changed. So I think there's an education piece from a best practice perspective for if you're especially going to the cloud and doing M365, I don't care if you are on the admin side, on the dev side, on the user side, um, on the marketing communication side, I do think that so much has changed that part of the best practice rollout, in my opinion, would be to have some element of training as you're doing this, because that way people will understand what it is you're trying to accomplish. Not only that, but I just did it, sorry, I just did it with (laughs) champs and um, don't have the designer and everything. They're not your champs. The people that are managing the documentation or working or the migration, they are not necessarily your champs. They can be. They could be one and the same, but you've got two levels of it because someone that's in the doing doesn't mean that they make a good champ to advocate and train and help the rest of the organization so you know we've got the voluntold and the volunteer so don't confuse the two in terms of best practice have the two groups with that education to drive forward um to do two different components when it comes to sharepoint on top of that sharon and don't feel the need to reinvent the wheel either because there's adoption.microsoft.com you're not the first ones and if you want to learn from the mistakes of others or, you know, those of us, you know, cool, all of us are sitting here going, call me because we can help you. <laughs> yeah. don't, don't and step two, step two, have all their white papers, <laughs> step two have their white papers and awards and things like that on best pre- global best practice around SharePoint. Go and have a look at some of them and have a look and see what they've done to help this journey. They've got some fabulous content. Yeah, and to Sherry's point, the the adoption site has some great scenarios too, and they may not be specific to your industry or to the specific departments or roles that you're trying to have that collaboration for, but they should be a good place for you to maybe 
get some ideas of how that correlates to the type of collaboration that you're looking to have. Um, and I would say early on, you want to get a mix of end users into some kind of a workshop to be able to figure out as you're doing the training, like Sharon was saying, those are when they have the aha moments of, oh yeah, this would work really well for this specific need that we've had like these roadblocks with, or it's been a very clunky manual process, but now I get it on how this can make us more automated or have better communications and you know collaboration happen with that. And then that kind of becomes what you then build from or know that you're going to include uh, to, to help train in the future. Like you can use those kinds of great little bits to, to help you build that out and know that that's going to foster adoption. If it's the things that they're excited about and that are going to help them within their department or across those business units or as an entire organization, those are the, the little gems to find. And uh, the idea of workshopping it, piloting something out, trying it with a smaller group. The other important aspect of this, and it's great you brought up, Heather, uh, you know, the, the broader adoption of that too, is that the more that you can align it and fit it into the culture of your organization and tweak it to the nuances of what's different about the way that people in your org collaborate. Uh, you know, if you have an, you know, a, a, an older generation of employees there that aren't as uh, you know, active on mobile devices, for example, um, you might do things differently than with you know, a, a Gen Z and everybody is connected and they get that aspect of it. Um, but they're not going to do more of the documentation. They want more of the chat and the instant versus the, you know, the long and, uh, uh, you know, video and documentation type of collaboration. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you have that chance to play around with the culture, test it out, and then grow it organically, it's going to uh, have a lot better chance of sticking over the long term if you do that organic path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen I've seen quite a few organizations go and create a ton of SharePoint sites for all their various groups and areas and things like that. And then teams and then I'm going, hang on a second. But if you create a Microsoft team team, it gives you a group, it gives you a SharePoint and then they've got two. And I'm like, going, guys, you know, they mm -hmm. don't understand the architecture. Really important because I've seen uh, a one IT fellow create one hundred and three SharePoint site straight off the bat and made it just a, oh, look, made a mess. <laughs> so, yeah, right. think about it. Yeah. It's funny. Being able to, sometimes. <laughs> okay. yeah. Sorry, and and being able to figure out how to get out of the mess. You know, one thing I've noticed a lot of times is people that aren't familiar with Teams and the fact that you're editing the file real time. Maybe Heather has a presentation. I like the presentation, but I don't realize that I'm actively changing mm -hmm. Heather's version in Teams. So things like making it read only by default or, or changing certain aspects or explaining those aspects of this is being changed real time, explaining to users you still have version history if somebody did mess up right. your file can be really yeah. helpful. Yeah. And then you don't need five or 10 different separate copies. That's a big exactly. thing. Exactly. We don't need final, 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 final. final. Right. the real one, final, final. 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 <laughs> well, it's one of the things, I mean, where we started talking about governance, uh, you know, having a, you know, a discussion about governance. And part of that is exactly you brought up, brought up is, you know, what, what are the constraints that we need to have in the system? What are the life cycle management? What, like, what are we legally bound to go and do to, to save, our backup archival of, of data, our treatment of data, kind of all those things um, that may already be defined for your organization. So that also needs to play in. If you go into building something new, if it's truly a greenfield, you're rolling out building an intranet, you know, for the first time using SharePoint, um, the more that you can be aware of, okay, what are these constraints around the system? Then you don't it's not going to limit you later on what you can do. You already know what the rules are, the guide, the guardrails for the collaboration, and then you build within that and then let people like, one of my favorite things is uh, to, to go and build uh, the provisioning templates. So there's a number of, there's third-party tools, there's things you, you can do um, out of the box, sort of, um, but you go build those in just so that people don't have to worry about setting the life cycle management, setting the right policies, what are our sharing standards, kind of all of those other things, it's already established. The guardrails are in. So I know when I go to create a team or a SharePoint site, I get to pick from the menu of the options that are available to me 
already. Maybe there's still an approval process, which is another thing that you need to discuss. But again, it, you know, go and figure out from governance with the guardrails, have those build that into as you go and pilot and workshop these things out. And it's going to make it a lot easier for people. So don't they don't get excited about something only to feel like they're getting pulled back. No, you can't do it or can't do it that way. Yeah. yeah from an education perspective, I um, also found that if they're creating from teams, folders and everything, they're creating that from there. Um, there's less mess than if they go straight to SharePoint and they start creating folders from there and then they've got files and folders that aren't attached inside the teams because it sits outside of it. Uh, some of the other things that are kind of best practice like that training and education of where do they start from and if they're going to create, what does it actually mean for best practice when it comes to collaborate? Because otherwise they find that they're losing stuff, but they haven't really, they just have put it in a place that it's difficult. I know that recent feature has saved my time so many times in uh, either Teams or OneDrive. Mm -hmm. Just if I've recently worked on it, I don't necessarily have to remember which That's team it. was I in or what yeah. is this in my <laughs> OneDrive? What folder yeah. did I store it under? Super helpful. Yeah, and I mean, if you're rolling out SharePoint, have you rolled out OneDrive to go with it? Um, you know, really an important component. A lot of these things go hand in hand and uh, you know, so that they can work from their desktop and continue to be able to uh, you know, work that way because purely working online, a lot of users can struggle. See what I meant, Bethany? Can of worms. <laughs> we, we all day. We can I mean, talk a lot. this all day. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Is it, well, it's a big, it's, it's a, a huge topic, so yes. It's a huge topic. Thank you.